Hi, this is Tim. We've got a lot of great feedback on our control panel building series and a lot of good tips. And for the most part, someone gives a suggestion. It's like, hey, great idea. You know, I'll probably do that from now on. But the one thing that we can't seem to agree on is how you should cut a hole in an enclosure. Um, I, I used a cutoff wheel in the video and um, there has been a ton of discussion in different places on whether you should use a cutoff wheel or whether you should use a jigsaw for cutting holes in enclosures. Now, obviously, if you have access to like a laser or a water jet, then that is the way to go. But then really, I'll say that the other three options that were mainly discussed were plasmas, jigsaws, and cutoff wheels. So I've cut a piece of steel here in prime to, to represent a control panel, and we're gonna cut a six inch square hole with a plasma, a cutoff wheel, and a jigsaw, and see which one really does work the best. So I have a plasma here, but one, um, it's not a CNC plasma. I think that's what most people were talking about doing. And also, my plasma at least does not work good enough for me to make satisfactory cuts on a panel. But uh, one of the fab shops I work with has a really nice CNC plasma that I think would be much more representative of what people were saying in the discussion. So we're going to run out there first and cut that hole, and then we'll come back to my shop and cut with the cutoff wheel and the jigsaw. I want to take a quick moment to thank our Patreon subscribers who made this video possible. See the description below on how you can become a Patreon subscriber. All right, so we're out at the fab shop here, and <laughs> our good friend Luke is going to cut a six-inch square hole in plasma. Now, locally, <laughs> Luke is famous for making the world's largest Captain America shield. Now, Luke, will that be on the next um, Avengers movie? Or probably. You said? Probably. Oh, probably. It's, it's, very, possible. it's very possible. <laughs> It's got a little burn mark to it. It's got a little burn mark. I'm not going to rub it off yet, but I think later on that'll rub right off. So now we'll go back to our shop and cut the rest of it. All right, we're back at our shop, and I wanted to point out a few things before we go on to the jigsaw and the cutoff wheel. Mainly, um, this is fairly typical of what you would see on a plasma. You can see here where the pierce mark is. There'll be a little burning around it. Chances are I can wipe that off. I'm going to check in a second. And we have about a sixteenth of an inch discoloration around the hole, which is typically what you would see. So we're just going to take some real basic Windex, and you can see that, yeah, the bulk of that burn mark will come off where we pierced, and yeah, the rest of it cleans up really nicely, and this is what you typically see out of a plasma. Obviously, water jet and lasers work better, but there's nothing wrong with a plasma cut control panel. Then we're going to lay out our other two squares. I'm actually going to use the drop from the plasma cut as the template for for these others. Now this may not give us a perfect representation size wise, but we're more concerned about the cut quality than anything. Now another comment someone made about the other video was I didn't use blue painter's tape. And when I'm using a cutoff wheel, I don't use blue painter's tape, but when using a jigsaw I do. So I am going to tape up one of these. Also for the drink, for the jigsaw, I drill a half inch hole in two of the corners. All right, we're out in the mechanical portion of our shop where we build equipment, and it's actually where we do all of our cutting. And um, for this, I want to have my safety glasses, I have my earplugs, and I have gloves. Uh, make sure you wear those. In fact, I'll put some links to some of those in the description. Um, and so for the uh, cutoff wheel, I have a cordless Dewalt grinder with a cutoff wheel on it, a brand new cutoff wheel. And I have a quarter cable jigsaw with um, a brand new blade on it. And for our drilling, I just have a basic cordless drill that I'll use to drill the holes for the jigsaw. I like to start off with a really small drill bit for these holes, just to make sure we get it located really nicely. And I like to step it up gradually, that way um, you don't end up they grab and embed in the sheet metal. Now I noticed that the jigsaw could end up scratching our test for the cutoff wheel, so I might add a little more tape over here.
even though I have a jigsaw right here, I'm doing exactly like I normally do a cutoff wheel, and I don't use a jigsaw for the corners. I just use the blade out of a hacksaw. All right, I haven't deburred it yet, but I just wanted to point out a few things. Obviously, the plasma, you know, you had the one piercing spot, which is a little deformed. Uh, the cutoff wheel leaves a lot more mess, so there's a lot more dust and everything from it. Also, and I'll zoom in on this probably after I deburred and clean it up, because I get the feeling we're going to see some minor scratching. Uh, you can see where the tape embedded into the paint a little bit, and there's some residue here from the blue tape that won't um, come off. And I get feeling when I clean this up, there's going to be some minor scratches on the jigsaw. So I'm going to go deburr this. All right, we're going to deburr our panel, and I do have a Dyna file I use, but if you don't have one, then um, they're a good quality file. It'll work fine. Also, uh, as you can recall from the enclosure cutting video, that uh, every hole in your panel needs to be burred. So even though this plasma hole is really clean, and some people could argue, hey, it's a time saver, there's still a slight sharp edge there, so I, I feel your plasma holes still need the bird. Okay, so I've deburred all of them now, and looking at them, there's no doubt if you have a plasma, it is the best way to go. Well, let me take that back. If you have a plasma that works really well, because my plasma does not cut to nearly this quality, uh, but Luke's plasma did. Uh, you can see burn mark around where it broke through, and then it's really clean and crisp. Probably, probably discolored about a sixteenth, less than a sixteenth of an inch out, all the way around, and just really nice. Um, in fact, probably if this was an actual panel paint, um, it probably would even look better than this. Uh, this was just quickly cut and painted uh, for this test, so this isn't the, that quality of a job. But then we get to comparing our cutoff to our jigsaw, and I'm really going to upset all, all my jigsaw fans out there, but after looking at the two cuts, I have to say, still, the cutoff wheel seems to be a better way to cut a square hole. About the same as the plasma. Actually, surprisingly, a little less than the plasma. We burn out maybe a 32nd of an inch of the paint all the way around it, and just really nice straight lines. Like that, I, really, I really can't find too much bad to comment about the cutoff wheel. Also note uh, that you're, some of you are going to point out this little spot right here. Um, that's my finger when I was checking to see if the paint was dry yet. The main thing is that underneath that blue paint there are some minor scratches um, that can be seen in various spots along the cutout. And I mean some people may say that, that they're so minor that you can't, that nobody will ever notice, but my, my point is they're there. They could be noticed. So I think you have to count that against this. Um, also, there are some issues with straightness, and yeah, go ahead in the comments and tell me it's my skill level, but I mean, I did my best uh, trying to cut straight, and you can see uh, here's where I drilled the hole, and even there, I, you know, I had to dig in a little bit, you know, to get it started, because, you know, where the radius of the drill bit, it wanted to kind of walk away, and of course, it ended up going a little deep there, but I mean, even all the way through, it's just, just not the nice, crisp, straight lines that I like to see. Now, you could say that we could add some, say, some UHMW to the bottom of the jigsaw and, you know, cut with some guides, but I think really we're trying to band-aid, you know, an issue with the jigsaw when we do that. The cutoff wheel just makes really good, straight, crisp lines. Now, the disadvantage of the cutoff is obviously if you need any amount of radius to it, you can't use a cutoff wheel. But I'll have to say, for uh, straight cuts in an enclosure, the finished product, the cutoff wheel, looks significantly better than the jigsaw. Now, there are some disadvantages. Obviously, the, the biggest disadvantage to the cutoff wheel is it makes a lot more mess. But on the front end, the jigsaw requires a lot more prep. And really, I don't know that um, in the end, the time isn't about a wash. So that's my two set. Leave comments down below on what you think and how, really, how can we make a better cutout? Because obviously, this is something that there's a lot of dispute on. And probably the reason is neither of these really make a 100% satisfactory cutout. You know, a CNC is obviously the best way to go, but okay, I don't have a CNC. Um, and I don't always have the lead time to take it to someone that has a CNC. So manual cuts are something we should always be striving to do better. Till next time. You want to be in this video? Not really. Because <laughs> I don't think there's a clear winner. I think there's going to be controversy. I only like being in happy videos. Hey everybody, if you're watching his channel, go ahead and see mine better.
<laughs> Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.